One of the easiest ways to paint an abstract painting like this one is to start with paper. And that's what we're gonna to do today. However, you need to know what kind of paper will work and how to use the paper to create some lovely shapes. So we'll start with that. And there's so much that I wanna share with you uh, as well. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see some of the stuff I've got gathered here. And uh, zoom out a little more. And I want to firstly talk about the types of paper. And um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that the paper itself has three major bonuses. Firstly, the texture that's created by the wax paper. It creates a composition. So we're going to use the bits of paper to create some figures or things that look like figures, but they can look like anything you like. That's the beauty of abstract. It can be absolutely anything that uh, is um, in your creative mind. And the other thing, the third thing that's wonderful about using paper in to create an um, abstract painting is it helps you let go of fear, helps you stop procrastinating. It allows you just to tear bits of paper, which I'm going to show you all of that, and put the bits of paper down and start painting. Uh, so I want to start, though, with the types of paper. Before I get into the types of paper, I painted this one and released this video this morning. It's a really good version of what we're about to do today. I thought I would just quickly tell you those colors because it's not in the video because it's a quick version because I knew I would be painting it today with everyone and getting you all to see all the steps. I hope that you're painting along with me. This one, in case you want to know, Quinacridone Rose, Ultramarine Deep and Amazonite Genuine. That's um, a Daniel Smith overpriced color. <laughs> I loved it, but uh, it really doesn't have a depth of tone that uh, suits me. So I'm going to be painting on this block. So I'll set those colors aside for a second and just start by putting my little green leaf into the hole. And I like to demonstrate this because lots of people need to know how to take their paper off the block and uh, you can use this little green leaf that you can buy it's a Bao Hong product and of course you could just use a palette knife a butter knife but this little thing I have barely uh, <laughs> see I was um, not paying attention look I just tore it as I was saying the words I have barely torn any I tore it okay so that one's Anyway, <laughs> I might paint on the back or I quite liked this one. So I don't know. I won't paint on the back for now. I will, however, take off this excess little bit because that will interfere with my painting. Right. So I've got a block ready to paint. It's the Academy version. It's of Bao Hong. So it says Bao Hong in really small writing. So it's like their student version. And I'm finding it absolutely fantastic and enjoying the block because I've been traveling here and there and you can take these blocks with you and you don't have to take a pad, a um, support board, sorry. Okay, here's my little bits of paper. I'll just get the painting back so you can see how I created the people. So that piece of wax paper went there. There's the head, that piece of wax paper went there, there's the head, and that piece of wax paper goes there. So that is the summary <laughs> of uh, the paper and how you do it. And um, I'm going to show you lots of little things that I've learned about working with wax paper over the years and uh, to get a successful result. So just get rid of those again. And I wanted to also just say that you can keep them just like I have and reuse them. Um, you can use them over and over. Yes, they'll release paint, but, you know, I think that makes it a wonderful product that you can use it over and over. Right, so I've got a block already. I'm just going to put the cover back on while I talk about the paper. You can use this um, lunch wrap. This is the super cheap lunch wrap that you can get in a supermarket and it costs like $2.
it just is pretty good, but it's, it's not excellent. You can use baking paper. If you're using baking paper today, my best tip is to you to, when you've torn up the bits, put it in the water and saturate it because that will help it um, crumple up. And um, I ran a workshop a couple of weeks ago, and thank you to the student who told me that. Uh, this is the paper I absolutely love. It's, again, really overpriced, just like the Prima Tech. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Helen. That's exactly right. It's, oh, it was Julie that said that. Totally um, expensive, and I don't think it's worth it at all. Um, this Reynolds Cut Right Wax Paper I buy from America. So if you live in America and you're joining us today, then lucky you, you probably pay some small amount of money. But oh, I hate to tell you this, I paid $14 for a roll of this. I can't believe that I did it. But I love the stuff and I just find there is no substitute. Having said that, you can trial using this paper you, that you lunch wrap wrap lunches in. You can trial just using, um, this is just copy paper. It will work to a, a degree. You can use um, any paper scraps that you found. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I'm just moving my microphone and because I have to take my jacket off. You can use any paper scraps that you find. Like you might get a bit of paper from anywhere, from junk mail, and just see whether or not it works because it's worth trialing lots of stuff. Now, I want to thank Helen for this suggestion. So she, I was showing everyone on YouTube Live this junk journal. I'm just going to open it again. And that's where um, I was showing everyone ways to use watercolour paintings that you might have and you don't want to sell them and so I've been making junk journal covers and I showed everyone on YouTube live a couple of weeks ago and Helen said oh wouldn't that be great to do as a um, painting and so that's what we're going to do today and so I totally take viewer requests but it, having said that it has to be something that um, I can do on YouTube live um, so, you know, there's a couple of things that are a little uh, limited in that way. So I've got my palette out. I've got a second pad here because I had this wonderful thought earlier today when I was setting up, um, and that is I might trial inks. I wondered whether or not they might be absolutely wonderful. So while our first one is drying, so we're going to do the traditional method, and it's the traditional Marion method because, believe it or not, uh, I totally have not found anyone else on YouTube doing exactly what I do. So this is totally unique to me. And then I'm going to add trial experiment today with um, some inks as well, but we'll get the first one done uh, first. So I've got two pads here. I've got um, cheap paper and I just moved it, didn't I? I'll come get this back again. I've got some cheap paper. I have to get rid of the little cuties off there. This is just um, cheap Kmart paper. That is an alcohol ink. Look at that. That's what alcohol inks go, do. Go straight through the paper. Really, really amazing what they uh, do. This is for some lovely colour swatching and uh, talking about um, what to do. Now then, where was I up to? Tissue paper was the other one that I wanted to show you. Um, oh, there's some alcohol inks. I thought, depending on how we go today, how long the first one takes to dry, there's, there'll be a little bit of drying time. Uh, this is a um, method that I was playing with where you get tissue paper. I actually learnt this method, not with <laughs> alcohol inks, but I learnt it with watercolour. I reckon two decades ago I went to a course with um, this amazing man who created his own tissue paper and he showed us how to do it and then he created landscapes and we all created a couple of landscapes. Absolutely simple, beautiful method, but aren't simple things sometimes the absolute um, best? Oh, Helen. Helen says that's why I love you. Totally original. Oh, total heart out to Helen. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I've just realised that I can actually do that. Wow. <laughs> I was looking at your comment and it's got a little heart thing there. Thank you so much. 
Right. That's the other thing that I thought you might we could play with. But I also wanted to say that if you have wax paper, uh, sorry, tissue paper, this is completely brilliant stuff for creating textures and might work brilliantly. Anyway, so many wonderful ideas and things to play with. Um, when I play with this one, by the way, I've got some paper. This is paper that won't let the um, colours run through because as I was showing you with the alcohol inks, they, they soak straight through the paper. So when it comes to the alcohol ink little demo, I've got a sketch and watch pad. Just move my tissue paper out of the way with the alcohol inks. I hope I get to that. If you're completely stuck for paper, you could use little bits of um, uh, cling wrap um, or aluminium foil. So there are alternatives and, you know, we're all creative. If you're here and watching, you're creative. So sometimes it's a matter of looking around the kitchen and going, what can I um, substitute to get the effect? So I'm not going to be using this one. The problem with this one I find is that it collapses. So again, you just need to be creative and work out how to get around that little issue. So what we need to think about now is colour and then we're going to look at a design. So they are the two most important things in any abstract. The colour absolutely is number one because you don't have an object that it, or a focal well, point. You might have a focal point. You don't have something that your viewer is going to look at. You don't have a, a still life. You don't have a landscape. A, a pure abstract, and ours is nearly purely 100% abstract, it doesn't have a subject necessarily. So what we need to think about is colour and the, thinking about the colour, we really need to take a moment to do it because in abstracts, colour is numero uno. The other thing that is really beautifully wonderful about an abstract is there are no rules. You can just let go of the um, concern about uh, what it might look like. So let's start with colour. I have been in love, as you know, if you've been watching my videos, with quinacridone gold. I'm going to put some there. I didn't mean to put that much. And this colour is permanent violet. It has made its way onto my palette permanently. Oh, I am squeezing out way too much for a little colour mixing. So on the Quilla palette, it's got this little knobby bit down here to indicate purple, which is perfectly opposite yellow. And I pretty much don't love that color combination of purple and yellow. So I find that I don't use that, but I thought I would play with quinacridone gold, which is beautifully transparent, and my new friend permanent violet. And then I've also got moon glow. I, um, first discovered Moon Glow and painted with it non-stop. It is a purple grey. It's totally a mixed grey. So if you think about the colour wheel, just trying to get that back on, it kind of sits pretty much in the middle. It's like a grey and they've made up a beautiful purple grey for you. Over here is actually gold. So this is, this tube's like, I don't know, 20 years old. Do I show my age too much if I talk in decades all the time? Anyway, I kind of rediscovered it. You know how your stuff that you don't use gets lower and lower in the drawer? And I thought it's totally still viable. It's a Holbein Artist watercolour and it's gold. And then this one here is a super granulating colour. Always love a bit of granulation. And, oh, this one I forgot to take the lid off. I'll just use my towel. Let's see if I can get the lid off. Otherwise, oh. <laughs> alrighty, <laughs> not going to be using this one because I can't get the lid off. Um, I do have some blues on my palette over here, so not a problem. I think what I'll do is spritz the blues and uh, see what I might play with just in case I want it. Now, because we're painting an abstract, we're spending a bit of time on the colour. Very important. So I'm going to swatch that out. 
wash it off, swatch out my violet, permanent violet. Love anything with the title permanent in it. Love any title with the word permanent in it. Look at that moon glow. It is so beautiful. And they do go beautifully together. You can see them side by side. And separately, they're um, really, really beautiful. And down here is the gold. Is it going to? Oh, wow. It's just so perfect. Isn't that amazing? It's one of the wonderful things about watercolour sometimes is those tubes, especially if you're buying a quality brand like uh, Holbein and um, Daniel Smith and Windsor and Newton, is that decades later the paint is still totally usable. Now, the important thing is what happens when I mix quinacridone and gold with permanent violet? I get brown. So this tells me that when I go to use it, I don't mind the brown. It's it's kind of beautiful. And maybe when it's got a little bit of gold mixed in it, it's going to be even more beautiful. Uh, so more purple, tiny bit of. Yeah, so if I change the quantities, I get this kind of, uh, yeah, that's a bit khaki. I don't love that purple that much. So I will aim to have sections that have pure purple, aim to have sections that have pure gold and not be wanting that much of that colour, but I don't mind this at all. That, there's something really beautiful about that. And, of course, Moon Glow, that's already a grey, so I'm going to guess that that just mixes easily. I don't have quite enough to mix. Yeah, I, you don't even have to. Oh, I'll put it up there. It's just going to grey down any colour because it's a... Beautiful purpley gold, a uh, grey, gold. <laughs> right, colour mixing is done. Moon Glow does not live permanently on my palette, but I've got a whole tube of it, so maybe I'll make it a home. It can go over here. It can live permanently until this tube is used up and I decide uh, whether or not I can afford to add more of that one or just because you can just stick with the basics and still do everything you could want to do. So I'm squeezing out fresh paint, gold. Again, doesn't live permanently on my palette. Um, so I'm going to put it over here near quinacridone gold, and that way I can get rid of it later on. Because after today, maybe all I'll do with the gold is put it back in the drawer and it can slowly fall towards the bottom. This is quinacridone gold. I'm going to just clean up that. I've been sticking a really dirty brush straight into the paint there, so it's really yucky. Oh, I don't really want it to be yucky. All right, fresh quinacridone gold. I have sprayed my palette. Uh, it's the first thing I do when I take the lid off is spray the whole thing so that I do have access to other colours if I want to. For example, if I don't love this colour combination, I have, and I'm going to re-wet this on purpose, some cobalt turquoise here. So I'm just going to activate it a bit. And I'm just wiping it back in. That way, I put a little more water in, I think. That might be beautiful in with these colours later. Ooh, might be this beautiful highlight, but I will wait to see how I go. So let's get into it. I've got my wax paper. It's interesting that uh, Helen said... She bought mono wax paper from New Zealand, but can't remember how much it was. That's very interesting. It's never occurred to me to, I just always search for this brand. And having said that, I just bought some more. So I don't think I'll go searching uh, at the moment. All right, got my colors all sorted. I've got a block all ready to go. And I'm gonna move this and come back to the second one. So we can get going now. A little bit of thinking about where to place the wax paper pieces. That's all I need. It's about the width of the 
page. That's probably actually more than I need. You can go landscape if like a series of people. You can go portrait, of course, rotate 90 degrees, uh, depending on your composition. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this hard edge. I don't like straight edges. So get rid of those bits. And I'm going to tear a piece. And that'll be my first person. And then tear a piece. And that'll be my second person. And in the uh, the actual, uh, the one that I showed you earlier, I'll just show you again. I did one, two, three people. But the first one that I did actually had a, th the third image was much smaller and it kind of looked a little bit like a dog. So I think I'm going to play with that idea. One, two, and then this one will be half the size. So will it be like that? Will it be a dog? Maybe it will be a dog. So is that going to be a dog? And when I say a dog, we're not talking about a dog that looks like a dog. I'm talking about two little bits of paper that might look like, we don't know. It, we're not worried about it. Okay, if you like the idea of the people, we want to think a little bit about, um, oh, stupid camera just went out of focus. That's better. Want to think a little bit about proportions. So if that's the height of the person, surprisingly, the head is a really small proportion. Depending on which book you read, they go like one eighth, one seventh, one ninth, and maybe that depends. Again, so here's the height of the person. Maybe the proportion of the head depends upon where you live in the world. So, you know, some countries have really, really tall people everywhere. And some countries have really short people everywhere. I'm going to give this person some legs. I'm going to tear out. And I'm not worried about stuff like that. In fact, that's going to look really cool. I'm going to tear out legs. So I'm just taking a bit out of the bottom there. Ooh, I'm putting these little bits up here. I might be able to use them later. This person is way off the page, way too tall for this page here, so I'm going to be really scrunching them down. This head, oh, that looks a little bit like a butt. That's kind of cool. I wonder if I can, uh, if that's a butt, maybe they've got a lovely fat thigh. I'm going to go down to nothing. So this has got two legs. This has got point for a leg. The dog or animal or smallish thing over there has no legs. And let's scrunch. Very important to scrunch there. And let's scrunch the head. Oh, that one, that head has a straight edge on it. Get rid of straight edges. That is a better proportion. When you look at it, you, it kind of reads a little bit like a person. And that's because it's probably in proportion. Okay, scrunching again. Now, at this point, if you're using wax paper, if you're, sorry, if you're using baking paper, which a lot of people have access to, a lot of people use that in cooking, really scrunching it. So I will get fabulous textures. I can tear some off if I want to in the process. That goes there, that goes there. That head is now, you can see, too big. And it's got a straight edge, so that's the first place I'm going to start and get rid of that straight edge. Maybe I'll make it a little rounder and scrunch it up. Scrunchy, scrunchy. And I'll scrunch that one as well. The scrunch is so important. That's how we're going to get the texture. And uh, that's rather lovely. And uh, this one is a bit of an odd shape. So I need to do something strange with it. Should I just, I'm just tearing bits of paper at this stage. So should it go like that? And that'll be Oh, I don't mind that. That's um, all about composition, isn't it? 
I made a video on All About Composition where I painted some pears and talked about exactly this, that it's worth taking a moment to think about how the composition tells a story, that you can place things in different ways to tell a story. So perhaps these two people are the parents and this is the child, or perhaps these two people are friends and they're taking the dog for a walk. Uh, in, or, you know, and if you like tilt the people, they, this being, this person, human, is leaning right in. And this one could be going the other way. You could also put the dog between them or the person or the child, whatever it is. And I'm going to turn that one inwards a little. That's the head. And is that a little more satisfying? It's worth taking a moment over this. It's uh, so easy to do with um, little bits of paper. Just move them about. That little head there looks a little more like a family. I'm going to do that one. Okay, now next thing to do is carefully, just moving more stuff around here, carefully set them aside. So I've made the claim that I think I'm the only one doing it um, on YouTube. I'm sure someone else in the world has come up with the idea. I'm going to spray heavily. I'm going to keep my hand on my little wax paper so it doesn't uh, fly away. Spraying heavily. Anyway, so I totally stand by my claim that I haven't seen anyone using this method where you use the wax paper and tear it up to make figures or mountains or – and I've got lots of videos on this method because I love it. And um, if you find anyone on YouTube who's doing it in the way that I'm doing it, then please, please let me know. I'd really enjoy seeing what they're doing. And uh, I'll totally send you one of my original cards, which are basically watercolour paintings cut up to make gift cards. You will have to send me an envelope with your <laughs> address on it. Okay, there's my purple. I like to use lots of brushes I, for a couple of reasons. It makes me faster and it's more economical. I totally have a Scottish heritage and I like to claim that idea. That Oh, I'm claiming lots of stuff today. Here's the gold. Gold, gold, gold. And that's with a little tiny brush. Uh, just wash that one off because it'll be a while till I come to that. And then the other colour is Moon Glow. Moon Glow, Moon Glow. Okay. Moon Glow is a neutral, so I'm going to start off with that one there. So I've got a person over here, a small person there, and a tall ish person over there. Dump that brush. Go in for my Kodakran and Gold. It will mix later because I'm going to be tipping the paper around. Kodakran and Gold. Um, I think while it's here, I'm going to flash in some of this gold. Just little tiny bits. I don't want it to dominate and I really haven't painted with it in so long that I don't know how it's going to behave. And here's my permanent violet. I'm going to put some near the base and especially near that moon glow. Okay. There's white space there. I'm going to leave that for now. It's starting to dry a little bit here, so I'm going to really need to have lots of water where I'm about to put my wax paper, so I'm going to increase the amount of water 
and put the people down. There. There's the person's head. There's the small object that might be a dog, might be a person, might be, we don't know. We haven't decided. If I put the head over there, is that a bit weird? Oh, yeah, very weird. Put it there. That was very alien-like. Okay, this is key to the process. You need to have the um, contact between your wax paper or your plastic or your whatever it is you're using. Does anyone have any other ideas about stuff that works? Have I listed all of them? Wax paper, tissue paper, baking paper, lunch wrap, copy paper, any scraps of paper, plastic wrap. If there's something else that you've found works, I'm going to move that over there because I, that's the feet. That's the point, the pointed feet. I got that idea from drawing carrot people. And I got the idea of drawing carrot people from um, some YouTube video I watched a really long time ago. I'd really like to credit whoever the hell it was, but I've got no idea. But I do like to credit someone if they've given me an idea. So these ones, this is off the bottom. I'll make both pieces or legs go down there. This one's not uh, touching and this one is pointing to the ground. I love to include lots of little variations like that. Uh, I'm not 100% about the um, placement. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of the excess moisture. I love that kind of thing. Absolutely love it. Never ever tire of watching watercolour move into itself and um, I'll just move that up while it does its thing. How beautiful is that? Okay, there's very little paint in this section and I'm, I don't mind that. Oh, Julie says, oh, I like how it is. I like it now, how it is. Oh, that's cool. I'm just tipping, tipping, tipping so it goes north. And I don't mind that. Ooh, I don't mind that at all. I'm going to encourage that. Make it do it again. And I'm just going to bang just to make the excess water move off more quickly. Okay. Now, we know with watercolour at this point in the process, if you like the tones, you need to darken it because it's going to dry 10 to 15% lighter. And I don't add any more paint after this. All we're going to add after this is a bit of um, marker. Oh, that's a, not the one. Marker. I've got a black marker. It's a Tombow, but any sort of water-based marker will work. And any sort of water-based uh, pencil, water-based, yeah, marker. I can't think of any other words. Uh, something that will just move a little bit is what we're after. Okay, so we're asking ourselves a question. Is it dark enough? Because if you think it is dark enough, we need to add tone. Now, I'm going to firstly, because I've remembered, do the little flicky thing with the gold again. I'm kind of glad I flicked gold at the beginning because now I have um, might have trapped some gold underneath. Oh, do you not love to flick paint? Is that just pure, pure pleasure? Of course, the risk is that you having such a good time that you forget to stop. But these are, are not dominating in any way, <laughs> or maybe that's just called a, um, a justification. Ah, Julie says, Frank Clark, an Irish artist, taught carrot people. That so is probably where I saw it. Gold in between the legs there. I love that little negative space. What a beauty which reminds me about next week's subject, which is about negative space and positive space. And that was a viewer request as well. Okay, stop with the flicking because, you know, don't overdo it. I want more tone under the people. And this is where the wax paper is absolutely fantastic because you can do this, lift, and put under. 
I'm going to get more of that magnificent purple. It's got a really beautiful depth of tone. Oh, there's a space there in the leg. Really beautiful depth of tone. And that's why it's now going to live permanently on my palette. There. So I'm getting near thick paint. I am trying to add a little bit of water to it and putting it under. And then you use the wax paper to squeeze it off your finger. And uh, so this one's going to have lots of purple. And maybe the other one's going to have lots of uh, quinacridone gold. I'm just pressing it down. I'm not uh, painting. I am painting effectively, but it will have no effect. All I'm doing is pressing it down. It's not painting. The head has very little colour under it. Uh, so maybe it could have mood glow under the head. See the wax paper just handles it over and over. A bit more moon glow. I want a tiny bit of water into that moon glow. Otherwise you'll just put on pure paint and then it gets that uh, funny glazed look. You know that funny glazed look when you've used paint, watercolour paint straight out of the tube? And uh, it, I can find, I find that a little distracting. Now that bit there is sitting up, which means it will have no... Um, effect. I'm just going to zoom in on that one. We'll lift it up for you. See that little bit there? See how I can lift it up? That's what the top of the shape will be like. So if you want to change it, put a bit of paint under and press it down. And then I get that shape. So if you liked it, you leave it. And if you don't, you don't. So these little weird little marks up there are really bothering me. So a bit of water, so I don't mind these bits, but I found them a bit distracting. Also, I never like stuff of interest to be too close to the edge. You can always break rules and place things close to the edge, but sometimes I find that just makes your eye go right off. Okay, now I'm going to do pure quinacridone gold. So I'm grabbing it, I'm adding a little bit of water, and then... So it's not straight out of the paint. This bit is totally up. So trying to just mix it that little bit so I don't get that shiny look. And the shiny look comes from the binder, the gum arabic. And if you use it straight out of the tube without water, then you get that. Um, I'm just moving that up to scrunch it up and make it perhaps a little bit more like a head. That purple underneath there is a bit odd. It might look like a big alien single eye. So I'm just going to change that. And this one is nearly done in terms of uh, getting to the let it dry stage. Now, does this look a little bit like a grub? You know, you in the garden, you get those white curl grubs. Unfortunately, that's what it's, think, it's reminding me of. So if I change it by, and this is again, it's the beauty of the wax paper, it'll let me move it about. Take it right down and put a head thing over there. Needs paint. Put paint. Uh, um, actually, it's not so much paint. It needs water. That's what that is. Okay. Ooh, moment of contemplation. How is it? Okay. Not too bad. I've got really good contact. That's where the fabulous texture is going to come from. Okay. What I'm going to do, I've got this little uh, tray here that I showed you earlier with some inks. What I'm going to do is just put it on the side. It will start the drying process. I've put it this way on purpose because the, the opening for getting the paper off is up here and it's already um, bowing because I like to use way more water than most watercolorists. And so I want the excess to come down. And also that will then allow me to dry it. Now, normally my process with wax paper is to let it dry overnight. And then you have the pleasure in the morning of peeling it off to see what happens. But this is YouTube Live and we want to get it done. Now you need to know what happens. I find I love watching YouTube videos of seeing what artists are doing, getting inspired. Um, but um, any of those videos that have a second part, I'm always like, eh. I don't, I don't want to go find the second part, and I, so I never do. So I'm going to make this one complete so that we can get to the end of it. So 
I'm just going to move this one a little further away and I want to show you just keep it in uh, in the frame and what I want to do is show you this method of this little quickie abstract. I'm completely and utterly in love with this one and it was so easy. So I'm going to show you this one. Now, what you do is it's tissue paper and then I've glued it onto some cardstock. Actually, it's not cardstock. It's a, um, a freebie sample thing and um, it's really lovely paper. So it's not, it's not shiny. But kind of stock would work absolutely beautifully too. Right, I'm going to put that one there so you can see it. Here's tissue, tissue, tissue. This is the method I'm going to show you that I learned decades ago from that amazing artist. It was a course at Hazelhurst. I'm putting out a whole bunch there. There could be, I don't know, 10 sheets. Uh, and the brilliance of this method is that you make a whole stack. Helen says she loves the warmth in the right-hand corner. Oh, that bit of, uh, yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? I'm glad you just pointed that out because there's a, a weird thing going on just there. I'm just moving that about a bit. Uh, <laughs> that's, oh, wow, it's like this person is leaking something that's a little bit weird. I'm just rotate. Oh, maybe I'll rotate it that way. No, that's not working. Uh, my keyboard is in the way. And so I need to get rid of some stuff so that I can change the angle. That's the same right hand corner that Helen mentioned. I'm so glad you pointed to it because it was forming this little weird lump. And um, quinacridone gold, of course, is a really beautiful colour, but it so becomes a, a khaki brown, a khaki brown that we're familiar with if you've ever changed a yucky nappy, which, of course, is one of the beauties of getting older is you don't necessarily have to do that. Right, here's uh, 10 pieces, 10 pieces of... Um, Tissue paper, it's really, really cheap. I bought this tissue paper on that American site. Um, I was going to make a joke about it. I bought it on Amazon. I, I just should just be straightforward about it. This is some lovely thick paper. It's not watercolour paper, but it's really thick and uh, it's not going to allow all these colours to go through. So you get, get a stack of these and then you get these um, alcohol inks, alcohol inks, alcohol inks. I've gathered purple and green. And I'm obviously in a purple face. Um, anyway, I've got purple and green. I've got a little bit of white. I really quite like this white. The little bit of this pink left. I'm going to use the pink first. So this is so easy that I did this exercise with my granddaughter. And that's how easy it is. I wanted to use this one first because, oh, how cool is all those little fine dots? I should zoom in a little bit. That might be easier for you to see what I'm doing there. That's better. Uh, yeah. So um, because it's at the end, it's doing little cute flicky things. I was thinking I would throw that out. I was looking for a recycled simple. But now I'm thinking if I just add a tiny bit of paint, I'll get little tiny wonderful dots. Okay, this is white, purple. Now, if you go easy on it, you'll get lovely pale textures. But this one here, I really went for it. And I was using yellow, and unfortunately, I used all that yellow up. I've got a yellow ink in an acrylic, but I love the fact that alcohol inks go through the paper, and that's why this is so easy. Now, when I did the course with that... Um, artist whose name I wish I could tell you. I actually bought one of his paintings. I was so in love with it. And um, so he's put his stamp on it. You know how um, Chinese artists use stamps instead of a signature? 
So it's got a stamp on it, but I don't know what his name is, and I'm sad about that. And um, it's one of the ones I hang in my studio. And I really, really, uh, to this day, love looking at it. He was gentle and generous and um, and inspiring as a teacher. This is blending solution. And one of the things that I like to think about myself and teaching, this blending solution is just going to push some of the colours around. Uh, one of the things that I like to think about teaching now is to share your ideas. Be, be generous. Just tell everything. I once logged into, a, um, paid for to log into uh, Jean Haynes' um, watercolour because I love her work, but she almost never spoke about composition. And since I always found composition the hardest, oh, it's totally spread out to the side. I reckon it's gone through all the layers and an easy check will be. No, nah, it hasn't. Anyway, uh, it reminds me of how, oh, love that. I'm just going to hang on to that one too and put more in there. Oh, what is blending solution? Excellent. It's, these are alcohol inks, just like alcohol markers. Oh, that lid's not going on. <laughs> blending solution is just alcohol. And um, at first I bought blending solution thinking, oh, you need blending solution, but it's just alcohol. So um, remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about, oh, what was it called? It was in a green bottle and you use it for stings and bites and it's just um, a user-friendly alcohol. Anyway, so don't, I don't think blending solution is worth the money. And if anyone knows better than me, and it's not just uh, the binder, which is a type of alcohol, then I'd like to hear from you. Okay, so what I'm creating here, isoprol, thank you, that's it. Uh, here's layer number one. Look at that. Can you see that? Look, instant abstract. So I can't show you the whole process because I'm going to let them all dry. They just separate out. One of the beauties of using alcohol ink is that these little um, bits of paper don't uh, gather together. When I did the course with the um, Asian teacher, he used watercolour. That's what drew me to it back then. It was a watercolour course and the watercolour will do the same thing. I'm not sure that alcohol, that um, acrylic inks, will do the same thing. I wonder whether or not they might bind a little bit because the binder is a little different. I don't know. That is an experiment I'm going to have later. Okay, I'm going to move some of them out of the way. I just wanted to share this method with you. These, uh, later on, I'll just separate them all out. Look, one, these, these are joined, but they will separate. They separate like a dream. That's the bottom ones. And uh, as you go down, the some of the inks have travelled and some of them haven't. Look at this. It's so beautiful. just makes me want to play with it. <laughs> but I am on YouTube Live <laughs> at the moment. So all you do is get those uh, dry and then get a little bit of cardstock and glued them down. So there's one piece there, one piece there, one piece there. So four probably scraps because I tore them. and uh, Oh, actually, I didn't. Look, there's a hard edge doesn't matter. There's a soft edge, there's a hard edge. Anyway, I tore them and glued them down with one of those liquidy types of glue because then they glue like an absolute dream. Right, so that was a little interlude to show you this little absolute darling. I uh, should so do a video on that one. I'm going to just move that out of the way so that we can complete this one which is what we're here for, the uh, abstract people. So um, I'm, it's drying quite nicely. It's really wet over there. Now, as I said, normally I would allow this to dry by itself overnight. I love the surprise in the morning when you come out and you – and if – are you like me and that you um, – come out in, oh, Helen says more of that. Thank you, Helen. Awesome. Are you like me and, and you can't wait to, uh, I'm just propping this up so I can dry it. 
Are uh, you like me? You, uh, if you have a heat gun, it's way better than a dryer because a hair dryer is going to throw them around. If you don't have um, a heat gun, which is barely going to move them, I got this one for like thirty dollars, and they are surprisingly inexpensive and way better than a hair dryer for this reason among many. It just doesn't blow all your papers around. And it doesn't blow all the stuff around that's on the table as well. Anyway, we need it to be reasonably dry. I know what I was saying. Are you like me? And when you paint something and it requires a couple of layers and you come out in the morning and rather than go and have breakfast or shower, the first thing I do is come straight into the studio and have a little look. What's the painting like? You get that lovely, fresh morning look. And then um, if I've used wax paper, the first thing I do is remove it. It's such pleasure. Uh, just focusing in on any areas that look particularly wet. It doesn't have to be bone dry to remove the wax paper, but I really want it to be reasonably dry because we're going to be using a water-based marker. This marker, this Tombow marker, will not draw on wet paper. I'm drinking ginger tea. Look, real ginger in a cup and hot water and honey to try and help me recover. It's not working, but geez, I enjoy the drink. Really cool. Okay. I'm just going to turn that off for a minute and this is the least important, so take that first. Okay, now, as I mentioned, you can keep them. Get a piece of paper and put them on like that. I quite am going to keep this colour combination because if I like how this worked, I will notate the colours and go, wow, do that again. And so far I'm loving what's going on. It was a lovely um, a bit of a creative moment to go, oh, Go out of your comfort zone because so often what I do, I'm just look, going to get a piece of paper. There we go. Piece of paper. So often what I do is purple, 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 purple. Oh, that's beautiful. Now I'm going to leave them in place a little longer and just dry that one again. I'll be able to start on that. Well, thank you to everyone who gave me a like. That's awesome. It is really surprising what a little lift I get by the likes and the views. And, and of course, that's what keeps YouTubers going, uh, the likes and the views and comments. Love you making comments on our videos. All right, is that dry? Nope. Just focus in on that little bit. Give these another little dry. Okay. I'm stopping temporarily the drying process. I'm not stopping the create creative process, but I'm stopping temporarily because I want to give these a uh, little more time to do their uh, thing. The longer you leave it on, the harder the marks become. So having removed this one 
earliest, it's going to have the softest marks. And the longer you leave them, the uh, harder the marks are. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, that's good. I've zoomed in nicely here. And I'm going to show you what I do. Oh, just had a thought about what I should talk about just before I do that. And also that's <laughs> going to give me another second, isn't it? It's totally going to keep this palette. I'm a bit excited. And I didn't use the turquoise. That's kind of cool too. Okay, we just need to think for a moment about positive and negative and that we've got these figures and they're abstracty looking figures like that. And I'm just going to draw a little bit like that. And with a wet brush, um, this is quite... Um, small you could go even smaller might do one with that size and one with uh, the next size down so as you come towards the end of the painting I just lost my brush for a moment then as you come towards the end of the painting your brushes get smaller 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 because you're moving towards the uh the jewelry phase as joseph zulvich says He's a well-known Australian artist. Pretty damn amazing too. And um, I would have loved to have gone to one of his courses, but you never see them advertised anymore. I think he um, just got uh, success so to the point where he travels the world teaching but he, for a time, taught in Bathurst. Okay, I have positively drawn the black marker ink or whatever this Tombow water base, anyway, doesn't matter. I've positively created the shape by drawing the black inwards. The alternative is the negative, and you get such a different look. Both of them are combining soft edges and hard edges, but such a different look when you create. Just turn it around to suit my hand. Turning around, turning around. No, I'm not. I'm painting just with water. Just with water to join them up. There. Like so. I just went over that bit. Didn't mean to do that. And so as we come to our painting, we need to be thinking about that. Do we want to positively uh, enhance the figure or negatively enhance the figure? Okay, get rid of that one. Back to here. And get rid of that brush. And we've got a water brush. And... So back to what I was about to do, which is this figure here. And what I wanted to know, what I need to decide, I should say, is will I positively or negatively enhance it? Because going back to that little, now I dumped it. <laughs> Firstly, the head. Will I negatively, and maybe they will be positive and that will be negative. I think the positive uh, painting, or, or we're kind of doing positive outlining. I think the positive outlining makes them more important. I like the idea of uh, one of those being the most important, therefore this will be the least important. That's how I'm making my decision. Outline, outline, outline. And I'm following. This is the beauty of the wax paper or whatever it is that uh, you use to create your shape. The beauty of the wax paper is that's where I'm getting my ideas from. I'm turning it around and I'm going to do this one negatively, negatively. Now, you can see that I am disturbing the paint around it. So I'm trying to use as few strokes as possible. Absolutely limiting, if I can, the number of strokes. It's, uh, that's why this uh, kind of marker works brilliantly for this. So if you've used a pencil, I'd love to know whether or not your pencil is activating beautifully and allowing you to use a few strokes. I'm just getting rid of some of the excess lines around there. So this is negative enhancement. Okay, keep going with this one. 
Uh, this comes down here. So as I say, for these markers, it needs to be dry. It comes down here. Oh, I'm going to go in. Very cool that the, oh, I've got two lines. I could go into that one or to this one. I think I'll do this one. How cool is uh, that texture there? I didn't have to do a thing. I'm going around that wet bit there because the marker won't like it. Following the edge, I'm not thinking much about it. And that's the beauty of the uh, marker again. A beauty of the wax paper is I don't have to think about it and it allows me to be creative and loose and just releasing that beautiful ink. I hope it's ink. They're archivally sound, the Tombow, so it's not going to be a dye, is it? I don't know much about dyes. I know there'd be permanent dye, so I get, if it's a dye, perhaps it's a permanent dye. Negatively, negatively, negatively releasing that ink. So do I want more to that figure? I could leave that side of it uh, untouched, very abstract, uh, in, as it is quite nice. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Next decision, which one is more important, this one or this one? The least important is the one that we're going to release. So this one's pretty groovy and this one's got a beautiful fat butt and looks a little bit like, um, oh, what's that statue called? You know, it's one of the really, really old Venus of Willendorf or I think that's the name. Anyway, it's got this incredible fat butt. So do I like this one more or this one more? This one's kind of got a groove going on. I'm going to make that the most important. So remove, got my piece of paper again. Remove, and because I'm going to hang on to these little bits. Okay, we're ready to dry this one as well. It's quite good to do it in bits because my uh, heat gun does not like to be used for really long periods of time. The other thing that was interesting about the video that I released this morning, and I showed you that painting earlier, I'm just going to grab it while I'm talking here, I'm drying this one, is that I decided to see what would happen if I placed the heat gun on to the wax paper. What, you know, would the wax release and go on my page? And I can see no evidence on that. So... I was a bit surprised by that. So hopefully this one that we're leaving on the longest is going to have the, uh, the hardest lines. And if it's got the hardest lines, perhaps it's going to be a really easy way to make it the focal point. All right. These ones are going to be positively outlined. That was negatively, and this is going to be positively. So checking it's nice and dry. It's actually really lovely and warm. All uh, right, so outlining. It's got these little bits that go up and down up here, so I'm going to do those ones. Now, I know it uh, is really pointy there, but I'm actually changing it because I didn't want it to look like a chook. Bring it down and then it goes in there and out there. Beautiful lines. I'm actually going just outside those lines because they're so gorgeous. Going round, oh, it just kind of goes there and in there and down here, down here. It goes right in there, come here. I forgot to do a little broken line, so I'm going to stop. At that point, go back up there. I'm just going to start with that. I could do the whole thing, but I find it's better uh, positively. <laughs> I nearly did negative again. I find it's better to do a section and 
come back and see if you need to do more. This is much faster, releasing it inwards, because you're not worried about uh, integrating it into the background. You're just adding a bit of texture to the interior. So I did have in mind to play with acrylic inks as well, but I think that we've done brilliantly today. We've been going for quite a while and I'm always uh, more ambitious, always uh, biting off more than I can chew and then realizing there's just not quite enough time. I've got so many ideas in my head. I go to sleep thinking of ideas and I wake up in the morning thinking of ideas. Oh. Right, so you can see the incredible difference there is between the negative and the positive. And, um, well, I just love that look. Already I'm really loving that. Okay, well, I'm not sure I'm going to do the back of the Venus of Willendorf. I'm going to go for the last one. Here we go. Take that off, take that off. Well, it just came off in one super satisfying piece. We're going to dry that one as well. Checking it's dry enough. It's dry there, dry there, not quite dry there. Oh, damn. A little bit more. Because I know the marker won't work unless it's dry. Alrighty. Okay, I so appreciate, so appreciate you guys hanging around to the end here. I know that you can watch it later, but it makes a world of difference to me that you're here now. This person has a weird head, but that's the nature of the abstract mark, is the weirdness of it. Uh, will I go right in? Yeah, I think I will. And down to here. Now I'm going to really enjoy following. This one has the best abstract marks because it was left on the longest. I'm going quite quickly. Doesn't matter. Oh, that is so cool. That's like a really big weird foot. So these only have one side, one side. So I would like to thank you for hanging around and being supportive and commenting on the video today. So if you're still with me and you, I'm going to do a little bit more on this side, and you would like to reach out to me on social media, having said that, actually a few of you have my number anyway, reach out to me, then I would like to send you one of my cards. I've been making really, I've got to say this out loud, and it's always weird blowing your own trumpet. It is for me. I would like to send you one of my original cards. I'm going to show them to you. And if you're still watching at this point and you'd like to send me a self-addressed envelope, just reach out on social media. I'll send you my address and send me 
a uh, big envelope because they're big cards. I'm going to show them to you in a moment. And if you are still with me right at the end, you can even choose which one and I'll write your name straight on it. I'm not going to write in the card because that will give you the opportunity to um, uh, give it away or keep it or use it as inspiration. I know lots of people um, who are watercolour painters also uh, create cards and I say create cards because I don't paint cards. I paint paintings and chop them up and I love the idea of the creating a painting. I think it's easier to create in a big space too. So you can buy uh, watercolour uh, cards and I do use them actually but I glue stuff onto it. I glue art onto it. So I'm going to show you my little stash of cards. They're all going to about to go to Hazelhurst for sale. Julie, we love supporting you because you are generous sharing your knowledge and done all. Thank you, Julie. I'm definitely going to send you a card if you uh, send me a self-addressed envelope. You just need to reach out on social media, message me on, you know, Instagram. I think Instagram is probably the easiest. Anyway, whichever method you like. Uh, I don't want to put my address on YouTube, that's all. Uh, probably a bit crazy. Oh, look at his head. Very weird. I'm a bit sorry about his uh, head. It's very much like a dinosaur. Uh, and it's, mm, though it matches this kind of head and hell, I've already talked about how it'll end up as a card. <laughs> very likely end up as a card or a junk journal um, cover. We are pretty much done. So I'm going to grab the cards. Oh, just before I do that, I'm going to show you Grabbing the original request, going back to Helen, Helen's request. So here's the original one. And so we can see, I'm just going to zoom out. No, that's not it, that one. There. Okay, so you can see there's the original. I painted it as a portrait and then I folded it so that that became the front of the cover. Oh, my gosh, please tell me I didn't. Oh, because I'm about to sell this, also at Hazelhurst. Uh, so anyway, that's a local regional gallery. I shouldn't talk about it as though everyone knows what the hell that is. So here is the uh, beautiful cover. And so I create, uh, create the painting and then I cover it in wax and then it becomes a really strong base. Uh, it's, um, you know, it can't get dirty because we all know watercolour remains permanently uh, solid. Uh, Julie says, I would love one. It would be amazing to have an original Mary. Yes, it is. Um, it will be, I mean. So I've been keeping them in here because they are all made of paper. So they do need protection. Okay. I'm going to create a clean space. I'm pretty pleased. Pretty pleased with the colours. The, the This guy, don't, to, uh, and I'm calling it a guy, and I I'm going to say this girl totally has um, a beautiful groove going on, so I'm kind of really glad about that. But this one is just, I love it, absolutely love it. I'm a little bit disappointed that that's not my focal point. I love this one, uh, and we were using so many methods in creating this one. Now, I'm going to get my stash of cards. First, I'm going to wipe my hands. Just check before I touch my cards because most of them have a white base. Check that there's absolutely nothing there. And I'm totally coming up with this idea as I was um, painting because I so appreciate you um, hanging around. One of the things that happens with um, YouTube Live is that you can see people coming and going. Okay, I'm just grabbing a st little stash here and I need a clean spot. Oh, this is clean. I'll use that. So we'll just move this one up here and there. I wonder if I can zoom in. Helen says, I learned a sad lesson today. Using the back of old painting is dangerous. Paint came through. Oh, really? 
Sorry about that, Helen. Okay, zooming in so you can see. So you'll have to forgive the little uh, reflective thing there. The camera's having, having trouble working it out. Okay. So can you, is that as focusing? Work it out, camera. One day I'll get a better camera. Okay, try again, camera. Yes. Okay. So you can see the little watercolour painting. And then what I've done is um, uh, I, I brought a hole punch. And then these are little antique pieces of paper. And then you um, punch them out. This one um, is from a series that I did. Uh, of um, abstract painting so and then I've cut it up and again little bits of paper uh, this one actually I'm not sure if anyone wants this it's, it's a cat and I didn't like it so I stuck flowers little tiny butterflies on it I'm not sure anyone wants that one uh, so another landscape here uh, so again landscape and it just needed something so um, again you can see my little flower hole punch they are totally nearly all collages Again, there's, you can so see the background, and the background is so beautiful, and little flowers. Oh, that's another little moon one, and then I've um, duplicated that, uh, cut, uh, that shape with a round. So I've also purchased <laughs> uh, a hole punch that is a circle. If it sounds like I've been purchasing, I have. Right. I don't think they were the best ones. I'm going to show you some more because I really appreciate you being here. Okay. Now, then I'll flick through them and give them a number and am I being ridiculous? I don't know. Cats and cats, they're up. They're different angles because I've been flattening them. Uh, these are all cats with little butterflies. I did a whole series of cats cats and butterflies and I'm trying to turn them over. Little, they're all cats. <laughs> More of the, um, so there's the background and then there's the little flowers. That one, again, abstract landscape. And then I added a little tiny abstract moon. So uh, I'm going to what you need to do now if you would like one and if you're going to send me a uh, self-addressed envelope you can see that a DL envelope would be too small so it needs to be a slightly uh, bigger envelope so I'll include a thank you and then I'll include a card that you could give away so I'm going to say I'm just going to put numbers and if you like any of these you need to put into the uh uh, oh, Lena, so is this one that you, you love, this one here? I'm going to get post-it notes and do it right now. I'm motivated right now, so searching for my post-it notes. Won't be one second. Okie doke. And a pen will help. Pencil. Number one, excellent. Lena. I'm just checking that that is clean. It's a little, there, leaner. Then, and it comes, they all come with beautiful envelopes. This is like a pearl essent uh, envelope. There, okay. Uh, sorry, I was able to join towards the end here. I enjoy your creativity. Ah, well, you're welcome, my pop art. Helen, number two, for, so this one, Helen likes number two. How perfect is that? Helen. Likes the little boat. It's got such beautiful watercolour going up there. And the little boat is, um, that's Helen. I'm barely pressing that down because I don't, uh, that will have an envelope. It doesn't seem to uh, there. Um, that's number three. I'm going to put these aside in a very clean spot. Uh, oh, any one of the landscapes. Right, so... That one, or uh, that's another moon. It's not there. Cats, cats, cats. The cats are all together. Cat. Was there another landscape? I'm trying to remember. This is 
was part of the, uh, it was an abstract landscape. Oh, there's that abstract. Uh, oh, thank you, Julie. That's lovely. So, Julie, do you like the one with the moon or the one or one of the ones with the flowers? And I'm just going to get my pencil and write it down. Julie. Uh, there's a little lag when you write your comment and when um, uh, it comes through. So I'm going to put it th there. I think this one is quite cool because it and it is the most landscapey. So I'm going to put Julie's name there. Is there anyone else who would like to send me a self-addressed envelope uh, so I can send you a little thank you and also send you a card that you could give away um, and. Keep in mind that it needs to be an envelope big enough for me to put this in. Uh, oh, my God, you need to put stamps on it. <laughs> a self-addressed stamped envelope. That's hilarious that I forgot to say that part. So you'd send me an envelope and inside <laughs> there will be an envelope for me to return this and it'll have your address and your <laughs> and some stamps on it so that I don't have to go down and, uh, anyway, while I'm waiting to see if there's just anyone else there, here is the final result. Totally, wonderfully landscape, <laughs> landscape. I've got landscapes on the, on the mind now. Ah, uh, thanks, Helen. That's lovely. Uh, so abstract. Um, I love the abstract. I think the colours worked really well. And in any labs, uh, abstract, colour is absolutely the most important element. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you commenting and I appreciate your support because I just love doing this. It's such a wonderful way. I've um, had cold after cold after cold and it, I would have had to have been cancelling um, the moon, please. Think Great. I would have had to have been cancelling uh, classes with um, the colds that I've had one after the other. I had a brief period of feeling a little better and that's when that workshop occurred. So I was really, really pleased to go and do that workshop. Um, that was really, really cool. Okay, guys, next week we are doing positive and negative shapes. I'm just going to put this here. Here's a negative shape and here's a positive shape. I'm not quite decided about what form that's going to take. I've had lots of creative thoughts about what it might be, but um, it will be wonderfully creative, probably uh, wonderfully abstract. <laughs> we'll, uh, uh, we'll see. Thank you so much, guys. Hope, I can, hope you can join me next week as well. See you next week, 9.30. Bye. <laughs>